Hi, I'm Jo Spillane, Global Head of Private Capital Markets for Macquarie Capital. We've been talking to our clients globally about the opportunities that lie ahead in a hydrogen-powered future, opportunities for both corporates and investors alike. And I'm very pleased to be joined by a colleague of mine, Alexandra Nilsson, from the GIG in our Amsterdam office. Um, Alexandra is a, a senior vice president in that team to talk about the themes that have been emerging in the hydrogen landscape over the last year. So Alexandra, welcome. Thank you, Joe. It's very nice to be here. So I'd like to, uh, I'd like to start by asking you something personal and it's about your own journey. How did you end up working in green energy and renewables? So I've always been interested in renewable energy. Um, I started out my career in energy and power investment banking. So I looked at everything from upstream oil and gas to conventional power generation and infrastructure. But renewables was what attracted me the most. Um, unfortunately, this was in the time of the financial crisis. So there weren't that many renewables projects to work on. Uh, but when I later left investment banking a few years later, I decided to join an offshore wind developer. And that was a very different but extremely interesting role with a mix of project development and financing. And that's what I love most about the sector. It's the combined challenge of how you get these large scale complex projects developed with how to put together financing solutions for a more sustainable tomorrow. I, I absolutely agree with that. So back to our subject at hand, the incredible growth in green energy and the emergence of hydrogen, even in the last 12 months. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, certainly. We've seen an enormous growth in the hydrogen landscape with a lot of large scale announcements in the past 12 months. And this has laid a foundation for a huge opportunity in this nascent asset class. Macquarie has been looking closely at the space for about two and a half years. And the reasons we find this industry so interesting is because it plays to a few key themes for us. So first of all, there's a connection with our GIG renewables development business. We have a very large resource with a development pipeline of over 30 gigawatts in 25 countries. And there's a direct link between this resource and green hydrogen production as renewable electricity is the key feedstock for green hydrogen. Secondly, if we believe that hydrogen will be a major energy vector in a net zero world, then the infrastructure requirement will be enormous. Infrastructure development and funding is obviously our heritage and we wanna play a significant role in this. And finally, our mission at GIG is to accelerate the energy transition. And if we want to talk about it, acceleration and not just business as usual, then we need to be at the forefront of these opportunities and commit time and resources early on. Again, I can only agree. And, and so tell us more, what are the themes that have been emerging? We see a very large role for green hydrogen, and this is supported by governments globally. Especially here in Europe, we've seen a lot of announcements, both on the level of European Union, but also on hydrogen roadmaps and strategies of individual member states. The reasons for these announcements is that hydrogen has the potential to decarbonize hard to abate sectors, like, for example, industrial and chemicals production or heavy duty mobility. In the future, it could potentially also be used for energy storage or for heating. So the key market themes we're seeing is that the hydrogen sector is emerging with so-called significant market noise and a clear enthusiasm from policymakers and funding agencies. There is, however, a significant cost premium to producing this green hydrogen as compared to grey hydrogen produced from natural gas. Um, the expectation is that as the industry develops, this high production cost will see a significant reduction over time as capital costs fall due to economies of scale and operational costs fall in line with falling renewables costs. And the third team, theme we see is around the support needed. Um, so in the near term, all projects will require government support. So this could be grant funding or other subsidies as government is still considering how best to support the supply, but also stimulate the demand in the sector. We believe that hydrogen plants, technology and integration solutions are all rapidly evolving to achieve this long-term goal of cost parity with fossil-based hydrogen. So for investors and corporates looking to get involved, in your experience, what are the key ingredients for a successful project? That's a very good question, Joe. And we do see some key requirements for success. So you need to secure an optimal site, an end user, and that government support we talked about. So ideally your site will be located close to the demand or close to future transportation infrastructure. And the off-taker part is really the crucial bit here. 
then you need to optimize your energy solution and plant configuration. And by that, I mean, you need to access the lowest price for your feedstock input, i.e. the renewable energy, but also optimize how you run the plant so that you produce in line with the off-taker demand. And then it's all about leveraging those value drivers to support the project economics and gradually achieve that cost parity. So this includes lowering your net energy cost, securing concessional finance and the lowest financing cost solution, um, accessing local carbon credit or market incentive schemes, securing a green premium for your offtake, but also to aggregate demand and scale that into a hub. Um, we also see challenges, however. Um, so the best pathway to net zero is not yet clear, and there needs to be more visibility on how emission reductions are achieved in various and supported in various sectors, for example, through carbon taxes, con contracts for difference, or through demand side support. And there also needs to come a tracing and certification system for ensuring that that hydrogen is produced in a sustainable manner. Well, thank you so much for your insights, Adam Sandra. That's been fascinating. You know, from my perspective, my clients are very long-term investors and as hydrogen is absolutely going to be part of the long-term energy mix, I think it's a sector that we all need to stay really close to. I know I'm, I'm, I'm certainly going to be interested in seeing how it continues to develop over the near term. Thank you again. Thank you, Joe.